one thing that I would want to do before I die, like, if I don't do it, I'd regret my whole life, is, uh, uh, Oh, I don't know. I want to travel somewhere super exotic, like no one knows the name of it, but like go there and like show the world what it's like and stuff. And um, Nick, my question for you is the same thing. Um, before you die, what would you want to do that um, you'd regret if you didn't? Hi, Ashley. Uh, one thing I would regret not doing before I die would probably be... Um, Helping everyone who's helped me at some point in my life, like everyone who's like just helped me mo give me money in the street, I think that giving that back in some way would be a ma like not giving that back in some way would be a major regret of mine because then I don't feel like I've done my part to help the world. So that would be a major regret I have. And then I'm gonna nominate Miss Morrison, and my question for her would be. What was one thing she wished she could change about something she's done in the past? Hi Nick, I'm Mrs. Morrison and your question was if I could go back in time, what would I change and why? If I could go back in time, I would um, try to make myself more confident because I think that having a lack of confidence affected my relationships with others and my ability to achieve when I was young. Um, it took a long time for me to believe in myself, and once I did, I found that I was able to be kinder to others and help others in a different way um, and sometimes see things from their perspective a little bit easier. So I wish I would have learned that lesson sooner. So um, how do I pass it on? <laughs> I'm going to um, nominate Mr. Jay Goals, and my question for you is what was your most embarrassing moment in life and what did you learn from it? Hi, Ms. Morrison. This is Mr. Jagels. I appreciate the question. Your, your question to me was, what was the most embarrassing moment uh, in my life? And, and I guess, how did it impact me? For me, it wasn't necessarily the most embarrassing moment, but the most embarrassing time period. Uh, I was a really overweight kid, uh, I would say, from about six years old until almost my sophomore year of high school. Um, Jagels fat. I was teased probably relentlessly. And my one escape was athletics. Uh, although I was overweight, I was incredibly good at sports. And it, and it kind of gave me uh, the confidence to understand, even though I might have been overweight, I was still found acceptance uh, in, in other ways. And, and it, it makes me realize that it, for those students that don't have an outlet or a way to, to, to redefine themselves, the, the world that it could create for them. So I'm, I guess I'm, it's, it's changed me in terms of being more accepting of, of other people and, and how they are and, and the way they come to school. And uh, in a way, it, it's it's helped me look at the kind of school that I'd like to help create. And that's one that's an accepting environment where kids can be who they are um, and live in a world where they're accepted regardless of who they are. Uh, so my question would be probably to Chris Padgett in terms of how can we create an environment here that's completely accepting of students for who and what they are? And, and what are some programming things that we could do to help create that kind of environment? So I think, I believe the question that was asked of me from Mr. Jagels was how can I, uh, what programs I can think of in order to create an environment uh, where people can accept each other for who they are. Uh, initially, just my, my, my gut response to this question is I think it would be great at the school if we could somehow come up with a peer buddying system. Uh, and even if it's just for one day, some type of scenario where uh, we pair students up with someone that they don't know, uh, maybe from different backgrounds, whatever it may be, and have them tied to each other, uh, maybe literally, but maybe figuratively, throughout the day, and and force them to be put in situations where they have to get to know the the other person, and, and hopefully by the end of that, they can have a real appreciation of maybe where they're coming from. Uh, that's kind of just my my initial knee jerk response to that question, and thinking like, how can we really get people to kind of appreciate where they're coming from? Um, my question moving forward would be for Miss Basic, and it, my question would be is, uh, you can pick anybody, dead or alive, uh, to have, if you could have dinner with, who would that be? All right, to answer Mr. Padgett's question about if I could pick anyone, dead or alive, to have dinner with, who would it be and why? I'm gonna pick a couple, the Obamas. I am gonna have dinner, um, hopefully one day, 
um, with the president and the first lady um, because I feel like they've um, made a lot of strides um, in so many different ways and I think being the first black president um, is a huge responsibility in so many ways. I also want to have dinner with them because I think they're pretty fun, right? You could easily sit down, share a meal, joke around with them, great sense of humor, and they are so intelligent and I'd hope that by sharing a meal with them I could glean some of their knowledge. Um, I just think they'd be great people to know. So that's who I'd pick. Now, my question goes to Valerie Nguyen. And my question is, if you were born again in any country, with any culture, or any race, what race would you choose? All right, um, hi Miss Basic, it's Valerie. So to answer your question, I would want to be someone from Vietnam who lives on a farm or like, um, some, like a very um, authentic um, lifestyle um, tailored to Vietnam because I feel that I want to learn more about my culture and I'm very uncultured and I want to be able to understand my own origins so I can um, better understand other people around me. And my question is to Mr. Birch and my question is, uh, what is one quote you live on? Uh, to Valerie, uh, the, the quote that I tend to try to follow on a daily basis is treat others as you would like to be treated. And my question is for Mr. Joe Radun, who is a government teacher here, soon to be a dean over at Marshall High School. And I just want to know, in the tough conditions that you survive in every single day, how you're able to keep that butter knife fart looking so crisp by the end of the day. To answer Mr. Birch's question, how do I keep my butter knife fart uh, in place? It's simple, Mr. Birch. Uh, quality hair products, which uh, you clearly would know nothing about at this stage of your life. Uh, my question, serious question, goes to uh, Coach Haddock. Uh, Coach, I realize uh, that you're a man that wears many hats around this building. Uh, you're under an enormous amount of stress. Uh, could you share with us uh, your time management skills? How do you manage to uh, do such a great job throughout the school day and then put together uh, a championship team year after year on the football field? Okay, Mr. Radoon, thank you very much for asking me the question about my time management slash organizational skills. I appreciate that. Um, I do wear a lot of hats here at Centerville, and one of the things that I try to do is I try to finish one assignment before I go to the next one. And, I, and when I do that, uh, I think I, I do a better job at completing each assignment. It gives me more time to, to complete extra assignments, and so when something else gets added to my plate, I'm able to uh, manage it and organize it better. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott, I know you were a police officer for a lot of years. Uh, can you describe to, to me the most interesting case that you ever worked? What were the details of it and why is it something that you still remember so vividly? Reference uh, the question, what was the most interesting case or incident that happened during my career in law enforcement? Uh, it's a tough one. There's several. I had a fun career. Uh, but I'm going to pick one when I was on the SWAT team as a sergeant, uh, and we call it the Christmas Day Massacre. Uh, early Christmas Day, uh, after my kids just opened their gifts, we got notified, at that time it was called Page, a pager, uh, because we were on call 724 of an active shooter in Great Falls. Uh, so I immediately uh, left my family, responded in my uh, SUV that was uh, had all my equipment and I expedited to the location. Uh, once I got on location, we determined uh, that there was a body nearby in another house, same suspect entered this house, several shots fired. We weren't sure what we had, but we knew we had to go in. Uh, we, we felt that there's some people could be seriously injured or dead. And we had to uh, make a, a rapid deployment and, and, and into the, enter the house immediately. Upon entry, uh, we uh, secured the basement, we gassed the house, and we started methodically clearing the house, and as we were doing it, we found bodies. And uh, I just remember the snapshots of these bodies where they were defenseless and they were shot, and uh, I remember one teenager kid in a closet hiding with his hands covering him, and he was shot several times. And uh, it, uh, eventually we worked up to the last bedroom, and that's where we found the suspect. He had the gun and a, a woman that was killed, and he's killed himself. 
Uh, the reason I bring that story up because it kind of captures uh, how uh, the life of a SWAT operator, where you uh, uh, just doing your normal everyday uh, business and life, and all of a sudden you just got to change gears and be focused and respond to something like this. I just remember, you know, you know, open gifts to my kids. I see this, and I'm going over to my dad's for Christmas dinner. It was just a, a very emotionally draining day, and I tell all my my when I was on the team, all the new guys on it uh, that are applying for the team, uh, the story because it, it gives you a reality check what this is all about. So with that being said, uh, it was a great job, uh, great people, and uh, they need to be careful out there. So. Uh, that, that's why I told that story. Question. Reference to questions with Mr. Rose. Uh, Mr. Rose, you have a great reputation at Centerville High School. You have an awesome relationship with the kids, and you also have a passion for motorcycles. Just curious, why do you have that passion? What started your interest in motorcycles? I uh, got into motorcycles when I was four years old with my uncle. I had a little mini bike sitting outside on the farm that we lived on, and we rode motorcycles taught me how to ride motorcycles and then I started a motorcycle racing career when I was eight years old. And it's just been a long time passion of mine. Now I have a question for Bob. What makes you so driven in all your schoolwork and all the endeavors that you do, the robotics team and everything else that you carry around all the time? Hey Mr. Rose, the thing that keeps me the most motivated is seeing how happy kids become when they see uh, what they've done and my question for Brendan is what makes him proud to be a Centerville student? Hey Bob, thanks for your question and the answer to your question What's the most proudest thing for me as a Centerville student is that I think Centerville High School brings a lot of diverse groups together such as clubs activities and sports so for me uh, marching band and German club I do those things and that really brings me together as a person and there's a lot of activities that bring other people together so I think that's really cool about Centerville and that's what makes me proud and my question to Chris Kim is what's the most embarrassing moment of your life hey Brandon so to answer your question the most embarrassing moment in my life um, has to be when I gave my NJHS speech at Rocky River Middle School so in short I had a voice crack in front of a full house and it's been a good three or four years since that speech and my friends still make fun of me for it um, but I just wanted to kind of explain to the audience and why I'm doing this video project so to me Centerville is a place that is um, beautifully diverse and I've had the honor and privilege um, of getting to know a very wide range of different people and I'm really really thankful for that and I just wanted people to know that um, maybe there's things that you don't ever realize about the person you always walk across in the hallway and there's a lot more to this school than just your um, small circle or your group of friends and there's a lot of beautiful connections that um, that bring us all together that um, aren't always noticeable just through a physical glance and so I just encourage you to be people who um, give it a shot and you never know who you could be friends with Thank you for watching.